Hi all, welcome to our channel. This week we're looking at whether there's enough fact-checking being done ahead of books being released. Another explosive book on the royal family made its way to the front page of news outlets. Apart from the usual disgruntled royalist coverage, Endgame by journalist Omid Scobie was criticised after it appeared that the Dutch version had published the identity of a member of the family who allegedly made comment in regards to the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's child's race, even though UK libel laws forbid this. While Scobie vehemently denies this, his involvement in this particular fiasco brings up a pertinent question about books in general. It is, of course, not the first time such a thing has happened. Social commentator Naomi Klein addresses the case of conspiracy theorist Naomi Wolf's work being retracted in her latest book, Doppelganger. During a BBC radio interview in 2019, it appeared that outrages, sex, censorship and the criminalisation of love, which detailed the persecution of homosexuality in Victorian Britain, had incorrect misinterpretations of the 19th century English legal terms within the book. And the theme continues in 2019, with American author Michael Wolff having to defend his 2019 Donald Trump book, Siege, Trump Under Fire, from allegations of factual inaccuracies during a heated interview with Yahoo News. Investigative reporter Michael Isikoff, who penned the 2018 Trump book, Russian Roulette, called out Wolf's glaring error. Another controversial figure in the firing line was Elon Musk's biographer, Walter Isaacson, who penned a book of the same name. The writer claimed Musk had shut down SpaceX satellite network Starlink to prevent a Ukrainian sneak attack on the Russian Navy. And as much as I don't want to admit anything by Musk, he immediately clarified that SpaceX did not deactivate anything. Isaacson then responded, based on my conversations with Musk, I mistakenly thought the policy to not allow Starlink to be used for an attack on Crimea had been first decided on the night of the Ukrainian attempted sneak attack that night. So, who is responsible for fact-checking and what do fact-checkers do? Accuracy is actually written into authors' contracts. Science and health writer Marin McKenna told NPR that she had paid $10,000 to have someone check the facts in her last book, Big Chicken. Author Brittany Ann told How To Be Books that her traditionally published books went through a fact-checking process, but for self-publishing, that isn't always the case, of course. In an age of fake news and mistrust, fact-checking books should be a mandatory requirement, as stated in the contracts. Each time we hear about another writer being criticised for the lack of due diligence, it chips away at people's faith and ultimately turns readers off from the genre altogether. A sea change is required for these biographies to survive. Otherwise, they will fall down the same rabbit hole as the media industry. What do you think? Comment below. If you enjoyed this, hit subscribe and like, and see you next week.